Hey you guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to dodge and burn in Photoshop. We're going to start out with an image that looks like this. We're going to do a little bit of dodging and a little bit of burning, and we're going to end up with an image that looks like this. This video is meant to give you the basics you need to be able to dodge and burn your images in Photoshop. Now, dodging and burning could actually be very nuanced and specific to the type of image you're doing. Uh, today, we're going to be doing a waterfall. But obviously, dodging and burning, let's say, a portrait would be quite different than dodging and burning a landscape photo. So in the comments below, if you'd like me to do future videos on dodging and burning and I talk about techniques for different types of images, let me know. Now, I already have this RAW file in Adobe Camera Raw, and I already did some preliminary adjustments to it. And it really is just about done. I just want to kind of spice it up a little bit by doing some dodging and burning. So I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. And once it opens in Photoshop, Typical Photoshop photographer's workspace. If your workspace doesn't look like mine, go up towards the top right hand corner and click this little drop down and make sure you're using the photography workspace. Now, as far as dodging and burning, there's a couple ways you could go about doing it. Um, one way you could do is just duplicate the uh, background layer by hitting Command or Control J and then getting your dodge and burn tool. Uh, let's say we're going to dodge first. So over here on the left hand side in this little cubby you have the dodge tool, the burn tool, and a sponge tool. We won't be using the sponge tool at all. But you get the dodge tool and go up to the attributes at the top. Usually you want to use a very soft brush. So make sure hardness is all the way down to zero. Uh, you then decide what range of tones you're going to be dodging. You could dodge the highlights. That means you'll make the highlights brighter because when you're dodging, you're making something brighter. You could dodge the midtones. That means the midtones will get brighter in the shadows. Now, um, in this case, I want to make the waterfall itself a bit brighter, and those are highlights, so I'm going to stay with highlights. Now, exposure, that's more or less the opacity of the brush. Typically, you don't want to brush at 100%. You want it considerably less, usually somewhere between 10 and 15, so I'll keep it at like 14%. And then what you would do is you would just come in and start dodging. Now, one thing uh, to definitely have checked is this box protect tones. That will prevent you from blowing out a highlight or crushing a shadow so it's absolute black. Now, again, this is one method. So you could just start to um, dodging, in this case, your image. Many of us don't like to do it this way. The reason is when you're dodging directly on the image itself, at times you could shift colors and you don't usually want to shift the color. Now I will say that Photoshop has improved greatly over the last couple of years. Uh, older versions of Photoshop, it was a real problem. But the dodge and burn tools are much more sophisticated nowadays and it doesn't happen. But out of habit, I still do it the other way, and you'll find many photographers still do it the other way. And that way is we create a blank layer on top. I'll just leave this duplicated layer there, doesn't matter. So I'll go over to the right and I'll just create a blank layer on top. Now I want to fill this layer with gray. To do that, just hold the shift key in and hit the delete or backspace, backspace key on your keyboard, and the fill dialog box will come up. Just go to the contents and make sure it's 50% gray and click OK. Now when you do that, you have 50% gray covering up the image. So what you need to do now is just go over to the blend modes and change it to overlay. When you have 50% gray and the blend mode is overlay, it's as though it's not even there. So you can see I could turn it off and on and nothing is changing. But if we make that gray, a little bit lighter then the underlying image at that point will be a little bit lighter if we make that gray a little bit darker 
then that underlying image under that spot will be a little bit darker as well. So that's why we do dodging and burning, many of us do, on a 50% gray layer, because it more effectively, in our opinion, will apply the dodging and burning without shifting colors. Now the settings are the same. In this case, I'm going to make the waterfall brighter. I'm gonna keep the exposure around 14%, and I'm gonna make sure that protect tones is on. I have a very soft brush. Now, every time you brush, you're accumulating more of the effect. So um, it's cumulative. So let's start over here. So I'll just brush once and you may not see anything happen. But what I'll do is I'll just keep brushing on it. You can see how it's getting brighter. And then I'll come down here. So I'm making the waterfall part a little br brighter, obviously. Now I'm going to make the brush a tiny bit smaller by hitting the left bracket key. The right bracket key will make it larger. And we'll come down here and we'll get all this kind of waterfall down in here. I'm going to get the splash pool at the bottom as well. Brighten that up. This tiny little bit of waterfall, I'll do that. I'll get the left bracket key. I'm going to just, gives me a little more tonal depth on my image. I'm going to get over in here, get a larger brush. And come over here and do this side. And I'm probably missing some areas because it's difficult to talk and concentrate at least for my brain at the same time so we'll come in here and do all this all right so i'll do a before after uh there's before and there's after because so you can see we dodged that waterfall a little bit brighter but there's other things i want to dodge as well uh some of the rocks in the background it already has a lot of tonal depth uh, you can see some of the rocks are very dark and some are very bright so already it looks pretty good. I don't need to do too much dodging and burning, but I'm going to nonetheless. So I'm going to get a larger brush. This kind of piece of rock right here, I'm still on the range of highlights. So I'm going to make the brighter parts a little brighter. So we're going to just come in here and make that a little brighter. Down in here, a little brighter. So I'm, I'm making the brighter parts of the rocks, of these rocks, these wet rocks, a little brighter. And some of this moss as well. Actually, I didn't like that, so I'm going to undo that last brush stroke I just did by hitting Command-J on my Mac. It's Control-J on your PC. So if you don't like any of your brush strokes, you could undo it uh, by doing that. Now, uh, yeah. all right, so we have some dodging done. Let's go to burning. So we're going to go to that same little cubby where the dodge tool was, and we're going to get the burn tool now. And we have similar attributes. Again, we're going to want to use a very soft brush. Uh, this time... I want to make the mid-tones a little darker, and exposure is way too high. I'm going to pull that down again. Somewhere around, you know, 13% is good. Now I'll come in here, and I'm going to go across the same rock that I made the uh, highlights brighter. I'm going to make the mid-tones darker. Like that. And come in here. As a matter of fact, I'll switch to shadows. And so um, I'll undo those last three brush strokes by hitting Command-Z three times. And then I'll come in here, and I'm going to make the shadows a little darker. So I'm making the darkest parts of those rocks a little darker. So I'm just I'm trying to give it a little more tonal depth in that area. The brightest parts of the rocks I made a little brighter. The darkest parts a little darker. I'm going to go back to mid-tones, and then I'm going to work on these other rocks up in here. Um, actually, then I'm going to jump over to the dodge tool again. And we're going to go to mid-tones, and I'm going to come in here and make those brighter up in here, up in here, up in there. I'm going to make the pool a little brighter in here, like this. You can see that. As I go, it probably doesn't look like much is happening, but I assure you that once we do a before-after, you'll see a considerable difference. Um, I'm going to go back to the burn tool and we're going to stay with mid-tones and we'll make this rock a little bit darker. These bright rocks at the top, I want to make those a little darker. These um, kind of weeds up in here, I'll make those a little darker. I don't like bright parts on the edge of the frame, so I'll just bring those a little bit darker. Like that. Like that. Let's do a before after. There's before and after. Before 
after, before, after. You can see how this rock right in here kind of jumps out, and that's what I was kind of going for there, this little area over here. Now, it's very easy to overdo it when you're doing dodging and burning. So uh, what I suggest you do is uh, do a little and walk away from your computer a little bit and come back and then look at it and then see if it needs anything. So generally speaking, I try to just uh, give my image a little more tonal depth uh, by uh, dodging and burning specific areas to make sometimes the highlights a little brighter, the shadows a little darker, and then sometimes I'll make the midtones brighter, sometimes darker. It depends on what I'm you know, actually going for. And come in here like this. Now, as I mentioned, that, um, that dodging and burning could be very nuanced and specific to your image. And obviously, this is one instance of dodging and burning. Um, it might not be exactly um, uh, applicable to a different type of image, like a portrait or maybe a macro image. So if you'd like me to do a future video using a specific type of image, let me know in the comments below, and I'll be glad to do it, because I really do enjoy dodging and burning. And I think once uh, you get adept at it, you really could make your image kind of pop and go over the top just with tone, not like adding a ton of saturation or anything like that. So again, there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So that's how to get started in dodging in burning in Photoshop. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.